The surname Sand, given to characters born out of wedlock in Dorne, isn't a name you hear a lot in the story, and you wouldn't hear much of it at all if it wasn't for Oberyn Martell's high reproductive rate. But these characters are really fun to talk about and explore because of the direction the books are heading with the Dornish plot. So like I talked about in my Snow Children video, each of the kingdoms under the Seven Kingdoms umbrella customarily has highborns give their baseborn children a surname that corresponds with their region's terrain. But where do I identify the kid without giving him or her all the recognition of a house name with all its privileges, advantages, and power? Dornish bastards get the name Sand for its infamous desert wasteland, the only location in the whole continent to actually have a desert. Yeah, it's vast and deadly, but there is a lot more to Dorne's terrain. Desert Sand just represents this place best. The Reach gets the surname Flowers for its fertile fields, complete opposite to their neighbors in the south, who they've actually had a deep-rooted rivalry with over the millennia. Stormlands get Storm, Crownlands Waters, Westerlands Hill, Riverland Babies are named Rivers, The Vale gets Stone, Pike over at the Iron Islands, and finally Snow for the North. Out of all these kingdoms, only the Dornishmen treat their little sand bastards with respect. The culture in this part of the continent is actually far more progressive in comparison to the other more primitive kingdoms. Women are treated equally, and children born outside the confines of marriage are not neglected or looked down upon. Yeah, a lot of them are still fierce and violent savages, but at least they got this part down. I can't say I've ever met a sand before. We are everywhere in Dorne. I have been thousand brothers and sisters. Bastards are born of passion, aren't they? We don't despise them in Dorne. No, how tolerant of you. This great scene honestly illustrates Dorne's feelings towards bastards better than any of the books, which you don't really hear much. The World of Ice and Fire supplementary book tries, but you can't beat Pedro Pascal's acting in the fourth season of the show. The quote from this book says, They are not greatly concerned if a child is born in wedlock or out of it, especially if the child is born to a paramour. Many lords, and even some ladies, have paramours, chosen for love and lust rather than for breeding or alliance. And when it comes to matters of love, that a man might lay with another man or a woman with another woman is likewise not cause for concern. While the Septons have often wished to shepherd the Dornishmen to the righteous path, they have had little effect. Speaking of paramours, that's exactly what Alaria Sand is to Oberyn Martell. Oberyn never married the woman he loved, so just because the Dornish may not be hostile towards bastards, that doesn't quite mean they see them as complete equals. His paramour, Alaria Sand, is the bastard from Dorne we spend the most time with in the story. I promise you this character, along with every other Dornish character in the books, is written far better than the train wreck that went down in Game of Thrones. Alaria is actually very likable. She's the bastard daughter of Lord Harmon Euler. House Euler of Hellholt is a powerful family in Dorne, one of the more prominent ones if I'm remembering correctly. Before Oberyn Martell laid eyes on her, Alaria was worshipping a foreign love goddess and on the verge of becoming a whore, but now frequents whorehouses with her partner as a customer instead of an employee. The mother of four out of eight of Oberyn's bastard daughters, and since she was his paramour before his death, her four little girls get extra special treatment in the eyes of the Dornish, since they were born out of love. The younger four daughters are named Elia, Obella, Doria, and Larisa Sand, from oldest to youngest, the oldest being 14 and little Larisa being 7. While all of Oberyn's daughters have inherited the nickname of Sand Snakes after his epithet of Red Viper, his older four daughters were all with different women. Alaria is the only woman he had more than one child with. Oberyn's firstborn child was Obara Sand, and she's almost 30 years old, so Oberyn's been going at it for a while. Obara's mother was a prostitute in Old Town, which is actually a city in the Reach, so even though her last name is Sand, she was not born in Dorne. Oberyn was a man who didn't sit still for too long in his youth, and he was just a teenager around 14 years old when she was conceived. It took him a few years to come back to Old Town and claim his daughter. Obara's mother wasn't even convinced Oberyn was the father because of how many men she laid with in her line of work. Little Obara picked up Oberyn's spear and left her crying mother behind, never to see her again, because she would drink herself to death that same year. All of the older sand snakes have a major distinctive characteristic that separates them from one another, and Obara's trait is the warrior amongst the sisters who fights with a spear. Her younger sister Nymeria is the graceful one who fights with hidden daggers. Her mother was a noblewoman from Volantis, a major city in the continent to the east. 
Then there's Tyene Sand, whose chosen weapon is poison. She's known for being deceptive. Somehow, Oberyn found his way in bed with a septa to Father Tyene. The last of the older sand snakes is Sorella, the smart curious one, who keeps her distance with a bow and arrow. Her mother was a summer islander and a captain of a trading ship. They all have their father's fiery deadly spirit, but Sorella is a little more patient. She's out on her own forming a maester's chain at the citadel, something women are not permitted to do, so she's hiding her identity under the male alias, Alaris. Sorella spelled backwards. George Martin hasn't come out and confirmed that this is in fact the same character, but it's as clear as day with all the hints dropped. Though they all look very different, being mixed with different races, the older sand snakes and even the younger ones share the same physical characteristic of their father's viper eyes, genetically passed down to each of them, even though the colors may differ. But as much as I enjoy these characters, you guys have heard me talk about them over and over again in other videos. Two sand bastards that haven't had a place in other discussions are what I want to focus on this time around. The only other sand mentioned in the current story is Damon Sand, a minor character so far in the books, but quickly becoming more involved in the main Dorn plot that should take up a chunk of the Winds of Winter when that hits the printing press. In the past, Damon served as Oberyn's squire, and in Game of Thrones, according to the cast list, this Dornishman who applied the poison on Oberyn's spear was our man Damon. Freeze the video, and there he is. He may have been accompanying Oberyn and helping him prep for battle, but Damon is a knight in his own respect, knighted by Oberyn himself. Their relationship goes a little deeper than that. In a sample chapter for the upcoming Winds of Winter, there are rumors of Damon being one of Oberyn's former lovers. What isn't a rumor is his former relationship with the heir to Dorne, Princess Ariane Martell. He was so in love with her that he asked her father, the Prince of Dorne, Garan Martell for her hand in marriage. But that didn't go over as well as he hoped. In the fourth book, Orion reminisces about their little romance all those years ago, saying, Damon Sand had gone so far as to ask for her hand. Damon was bastard born, however, and Prince Doran did not mean for her to wed a Dornishman. This reinforces the point of natural born children still not looked at as equals to true born. Natural born is just a nicer way of calling the kid a bastard. Damon still has risen fairly high with the name of the Bastard of God's Grace, having some renown. That name stemming from the house his father belongs to, House Illyrion of God's Grace, another prominent house in Dorne. Damien's described as one of Dorne's finest fighters, and is now Princess Ariane's sworn shield. A personal guard to the heir of the kingdom is a pretty big deal. The Last Sand is a character I honestly would have never remembered if I wasn't hunting these guys down. Her name is Selvina Sand, and it's only briefly mentioned in the lore books. Nowhere near important enough to be brought up in the main story. Salvino worked in a brothel at King's Landing during the time of a Targaryen civil war. She was considered the paramour of another whore working at that same brothel. I think this is the first and only instance where a female character is classified as a paramour to another female character. The Dornishmen have been categorized as the more sexually free and less judged group of people from the get. According to the World of Ice and Fire, Salvina got herself caught up in a scheme to crown a random child as a Targaryen king over 150 years back. This Targaryen pretender had a small following because the women working at the brothel would offer their services free of charge to any man who bent the knee. Salvina's paramour was the mother of this child, spearheading this strange treasonous rebellion, while Salvina helped out with the new laws they would implement. A lot taking influence from Dornish laws and customs, like outlawing woman beatings by husbands and allowing females to be considered equal to males in matters of inheritance. Well, after the truth of their dangerous Game of Thrones came to light, Selvina and her paramour were hanged as traitors. A rough end for this bastard. These are the 11 sands mentioned so far, including 8 sand snakes. I had no plans on turning this into a series after the Snow Children video, but it seems like people are into it. So I have to make one on the bastards named Rivers, because so many interesting characters are amongst that list. Then I'll check back in with the comments to see if people are still interested in this topic. Flowers can be a fun one, but after that, I don't know, I would have to dig real deep into the supplementary books. But the sands had to come first, because of my huge Oberyn bias. Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll see you later. Thanks for watching.